in my quest to find easier ways to do things in the sewing room, I've come up with five odd sewing tools that I would like to share with you today that will not only make things easier on you in the sewing room, but you may just up your sewing game. And it starts right now. Hi friends, Tracy here from The Sewing Channel. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. I am so excited about today's video. Be sure to stay all the way until number five. Number five is my absolute favorite. It's the one that I get asked about most often. Enough talking already, let's get busy. Ever thought you could use an extra hand in the sewing room, or should I say finger? <laughs> this one is the finger knife, and I absolutely love this one. Now, if you're a quilter, this is going to be super handy for you. Once you know the size of the finger that you're going to wear the finger knife on, you're going to go ahead and put it on whichever finger feels the best for you. For me, it's my index finger. And here I'm just showing you with some scrap fabric how I actually would use this. So if you're piecing on and on and on, you can actually cut your threads at the sewing machine or I'm gonna take it to the table so you get a better look. So here all you do is just bend your finger a certain way while holding the fabric and voila, it cuts perfectly. It is super sharp, so be careful and keep it up out of children's harm. There'll be a bonus here with odd sewing tool number two because I have two ways to show you how to utilize this one. Let me show you how the noodle baster works first. You will need four pool noodles. I know, sounds funny, right? But let me tell you what, it is a time saver. Essentially what you're going to do is take your batting, your backing, and your quilt topper and roll them each on a pool noodle all by themselves. And then you're going to lay them out kind of on top of each other like you see me do here, but with the rolls consecutively. Then you're going to use whatever basting method you're going to use on your quilt for about the first 20 inches or so of the quilt, right at the beginning there. And once you've basted it, you are going to go ahead and roll it on that fourth pool noodle, just like you see me do there. And then I put some pins down through the foam. Now after that part's basted, then I'm gonna roll back so that all you see is the backing right there. And then I'm going to put my spray right on that backing or my uh, powder. And then I'm going to lay the next level down. And then I'm going to do my powder or spray next. And then I'm just going to, with my hands, go ahead and pat it all down. Now you would put your pins right there at that moment if you're just going to use pins as your baster. I know it sounds a little bit confusing because I'm actually not using my spray or my powder at this point, but let me show you again. So the back rolls out, you would put the spray, and then you would lay the batting over top of the backing, and you would spread it out, make sure everything sticks nice and good, and then you're going to roll your topper over that, spray it, and then pat everything down real nice and even there. Let me know down in the comments if you would like me to do a full tutorial on this pool noodle quilt sandwich. If you like the way my quilt looks, go ahead and click the link in the top right hand corner. It was from my video, Buried Alive. I teach you in that video how to use up all of your scraps, and I mean all of them. On to the pool noodle wall saver. I take no credit for this one. My mother taught me how to do this one. What you're going to do is cut up the center of a pool noodle, about eight inches or so is all I did. And then where the eight inches stops, you're going to turn it and then just slice it in half that way. A razor blade at this point would have probably been a lot better to use, but this is what I had on hand. Right down the center line, what you're going to do next is take about a quarter inch or so of that thickness out of there so it opens up nicely. You should have something that looks just like this. 
Now what we're going to do is go ahead and take it over to our sewing table or, or our cutting table or whatever table and just slide it on the side there. And what you have here is a wall protectant, just like that. Here I'm just showing off how protected my table is. <laughs> Do you appreciate this video so far? If you do, go ahead and click that subscribe button so you don't miss a beat on the sewing channel. On to number three. A crochet hook is just for crocheting, right? Not on the sewing channel, it's not. A crochet hook is perfect for our new ear pulley mask design. Slide the hook up the tunnel on the side of the mask, then hook the comfort elastic on the hook and pull it through. If you haven't seen the new ear pulley design or tried it, you really need to give it a try. It is truly a game changer. Click the link in the top right hand corner to watch that video. You don't wanna be left out of this one. On to number four. is the super board. This cardboard measures 72 inches by 40 inches. This piece of cardboard is what I've been using since the beginning of the sewing channel. I typically use regular sewing pins and I put anything I want on this board. For example, I was doing some free motion quilting on my new old Singer sewing machine. <laughs> I put some metal bobbins that go with my Singer sewing machine up on my design board as well. Here are some printouts of the original book that goes with the Singer that I just threw up there to help me with the bobbin. And oh, there she is. There's my new Singer, <laughs> new old Singer. To hang this board, all you would have to do is use some double-sided tape, poster taping, and I also did use some wire as well. And if you look real close behind there, there is some duct tape, but oh well. And I've never had a problem poking it so many times with all these pinholes, never. If you're a subscriber or you've watched my Buried Alive video, you'll remember this right here. And if you haven't watched it, you better click that link in the top right hand corner. <laughs> this cardboard has been such a help for me in the sewing room. I can absolutely pin anything I want. Here's a shot of the other angle of my design board. And as you can see, I just put random things up there. And for those of you that have watched this far to number four for the design board, there's a sneak peek at a Christmas project tutorial coming up soon. I really just can't say enough good things about my design board, I love it. And number five and last is the ruler hook. This ruler with this hook probably looks really familiar to you if you are a subscriber of mine. It's the one that I use mostly in all of my tutorials. And it's the one I get asked about the most. I came up with this idea because you see, I have arthritis in my hands and it's so hard for me sometimes to pick these rulers up off of a flat table. So I thought, well, if I put a command hook with the sticky so that it doesn't damage my acrylic ruler, then I can put a hook on anything I want. For today's demonstration though, I'm gonna show you how to put a wooden knob with one of those sticky, damage-free sticky things that you can get from Command. Just follow the directions on the sticky hook package thingy and peel it off. And the only thing I would suggest is that you, when you go to put that sticky thing on, make sure that it's not on a major line on your roller just like you see crossways there. So I decided to put it kind of off center a little bit. And then I'm gonna stick it down and then peel that top piece off and then just take a regular wooden knob. That's all it is, it's just a regular wooden knob and just stick it right on top of there. Hold pressure down with your thumb or the palm of your hand like you see me do and just hold it there for a minute or two. 
My white hook that you see here in the video on the ruler on the left, it's been on there for almost a whole year and it has never budged, not once. But if I want it to come off, all I have to do is pull on that little tab. This is one of those things that until you do it, you don't realize how much you really needed it. In the description box below this video, I did add some links to some clear see-through command hooks that I thought were really cool. And if I were to buy another one, I might just buy the clear one. If you found any value in today's video, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so that I can make more videos like this. You see, that's the only way that content creators get paid for their videos. It's when people subscribe and hit the notification bell so that they know when we upload a video, and of course you have to watch it as well. <laughs> Be sure to click one of these videos here at the end of this video. It will surely help you in your sewing journey. Well, that's all I have for today. Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care.